folks. Welcome to another gig of Stencil Mania for August for Donna Downey uh, Studios. I am using an 8x8 artboard. I am going to or have or am in the process of giving it two layers of gesso from Liquitex, the professional. Um, it has an S on it and I like to say smooth even though I know it's for surface or base, but um, it is a very smooth gesso that I, I really enjoy the coverage that it has, and I'm not 100% positive why I did two layers of gesso on this board. Um, mostly I think it's just so that I was covering all the bases and I didn't leave any holes. Um, and now I'm using a modeling paste. This modeling paste, I know a lot of people either prefer golden or Liquitex or something in between. Um, this is certainly something in between, and I use this this version. It's by Blick, and um, I don't use it over the other two. I just use it when I'm going for a very specific look, and um, sometimes I like plaster, and I also really like encaustic, but I don't always want to work with both of those materials. Um, both of them take a lot of prep time and then a lot of dry time and they require special tools. So I usually can get the, the same effect from plaster and or encaustic um, or that I would get with plaster and or encaustic with this modeling paste by Blick. For whatever reason, you'll notice um, it has huge cracks in it this time after I let it dry. I don't know if that's because I put it on too thick or I'm putting it on a board that doesn't have a lot of give or maybe because I put it out in the sun to dry so that it would go a little bit quicker. Um, so yeah, I was intending for a very like encaustic kind of dreamy feel for this background and then when I brought it back in inside to start working on it, I had these ginormous cracks in it which were also very cool um, and so I just went with it and I actually do enjoy the finished product so that's really great. I just did here now a glaze of, of Liquitex glazing medium and I'm having a really hard time remembering the name of that color. Uh, raw Umber. I don't know why that took me so long. Raw Umber. So it's raw umber and glazing fluid, and I've got some baby wipes, and I'm just, I did two layers, and I really just slathered it up, and then um, wiped everything back. And I actually had started this project on an actual canvas, um, not, this is like an artboard, um, and the canvas was tall and skinny, and I couldn't get the stencil to work very well on the canvas because it had give in the middle, and so I'll definitely have to practice that before I do it again. But um, it's okay, but I just moved the product, moved all of my products and my idea to this artboard, and it, it turned out pretty fantastic. I'm using a Catalyst spatula from Princeton. I really, they're mint, called mini wedges. Um, I really like them. They're like silicone based. So whenever I'm done with them, I just let the product dry on the silicone and then I can just peel it right off. It's really great. This stencil is one of Donna's new ones called Petite Pot. I do know the name of this one. And they, it comes from her artistry series. And I'm using a gesso. This gesso is also from Blick. Just like the modeling paste, I don't pick or choose, like I don't have a favorite. I just like different things for different applications. So I like to use the Liquitex gesso. I also like to use golden gesso. And then I use this Blick gesso because it has a bit more heavy body to it. And uh, it creates a really great thickness uh, when I'm working on it. And especially when I work it through a stencil. So after that petite pot stencil was dry, then I picked up this other um, stencil, one of Donna's older ones, but this is my favorite stencil of hers ever. And I have kind of placed them, um, these, these kind of like tall stalks and they might be poppy stalks or, or, um, maybe not poppies, but hollyhocks or something. And I'll get the name of those, but, uh, I placed them so that they were in the jar and then I just sketched them in with a graphite pencil so that I knew where they would be. And, uh, I did kind of place them specifically so that it looked like they actually could be coming out of the pot. Or, well, which is maybe a jar in this case. Um, I'm not sure. And then I did some glazing with quinacridone gold, Nico Azo quinacridone gold. And I was, um, how should I say this? I, I know this whole project is kind of an experiment and it's gone kind of crazy and wonky and, and it's gone in places I didn't expect it to. Um, but 
I tried to glaze with that so that the pot would be like this bright orange, but I couldn't get it to catch on and I, it wasn't turning out exactly like I wanted and sometimes when that happens, it's just best to move on and not keep trying. So instead of going with that, I wiped all of that off. Thank you, glaze. And uh, <laughs> then I came back with the same gesso and I put the stencil in the exact same place and then I made that, I oomph, oomphed it up. If you watched my other video, that is a real term. Um, I really made the depth that was on that petite pot super thick. So I did two layers of a pretty heavy gesso to make it really stand out. And um, even though I had already gone in with a pencil and marked where I wanted my flowers, I decided to come back in with some of that raw umber, um, but straight paint. It's it's a fluid acrylic by Golden, raw umber, and I'm adding a, just a tiny bit of water to it to kind of get a wash going where these flower buds would be. Now I should say specifically that because I use modeling paste and it doesn't really have, uh, it has glaze on it. Oh, sorry about that. That was my phone. Um, it has glaze on it, but, but because it is modeling paste, it's very porous and it's really kind of soaking up the moisture that I've got in this, in this watered down um, acrylic and it's very cool and, and I'm very happy with kind of where it, where it went and how everything turned out. It's not necessarily what I had in mind when I started, but sometimes that's great too, just to kind of go with the flow and stretch and move and, and give a little bit to the art as the art kind of takes from you. Now you can see I'm going back in with the raw umber and um, less water than I used before and I'm, I'm really intensifying the color that those uh, buds have. I really need to figure out the name of this flower because I don't know what to call it. Um, these big flower blossoms on stems have. I'll certainly figure that out. Uh, going in with dark, oh, and now I've added a little bit of gesso, and uh, I'm mixing the gesso and the raw umber to form like kind of this like gray-brown color, and I'm adding that as highlights on the flowers, kind of where the, pet the highlights on the petals might be, and leaving the darker areas where the shadows are. And, I'm, and each time I go back onto the same flower, I am adding a little bit more white to that brown, and it's just like just adding variation to it. Make sure everything's dry. And now I've got black and I'm using like a tiny itty bitty nail brush and I'm going in and adding the centers of those flowers. And I did call this kind of like an impressionist style and the reason is because it's not realistic. You get the idea that there are these flowers kind of coming out of this pot. And when I put the center of the flowers in, I put it on every one of them, even though you wouldn't see them on every one of them. It's just kind of like the idea or kind of like the study of the shapes that might be there. Um, and after everything was dry, then I got out my Stabilo. Uh, this is a Stabilo Woody crayon, and I really colored in uh, on top of that raised surface that I got from the Petite Pot earlier. And then I'm adding some water to spread that color around. I'm also going to scribble in the middle and kind of add some water there um, where there's not necessarily a white part of the pot, but as if it were a jar and you could kind of see through it, but it still has that kind of teal color. So I just scribbled and then added some water and the Stabilo itself did all the work. Thanks so much. That's it. Uh, I'll see you for the next one.